Hi, this is Robin at Handsoft. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to pipelines and workflows in Handsoft. First, I want to give you a brief introduction to the difference between pipelines and workflows. Pipelines are a model of your production process that you have in your organization. All the steps that must be completed to reach the end goal. But it can be modeled to allow concurrent work. It is often used to define a definition of done for agile teams. Workflows, on the other hand, is a model of how the state of an item changes. It can have several end states and go back and forth, but only be in one state at any given time. A typical example of a workflow would be how a bug is handled. As a main manager of a project, you're allowed to add new pipelines and workflows. However, First of all, you should make sure that the column Pipelines, Kanbans and Workflows is enabled. To add a new pipeline, you need to go to the editor, located in the More menu. You create a new pipeline by clicking this button. Enter the name of the pipeline and click OK. When you double-click on this, you will open up the pipeline editor. Here you can see the steps of an initial pipeline. Let's add another task by clicking Create Task. You can connect to another task like this, which in this case would indicate that we can do this task and this task concurrently and it can end with this task. A workflow is added in a similar fashion and the editor looks similar to the pipeline editor. You can create a new status like this. In a workflow, this makes perfect sense as a workflow can go round and round and you can have multiple end stations like this as a workflow just models the state of an item. Let's take a look at an example pipeline. Here we have a feature development pipe that shows how we are developing a feature in our organization. In this case, it starts with development tasks. After this is done, we are going to do a code review and concurrently with that, we'll do a QA approval. When both of these are completed, we are going to do the live deploy of the feature. Let's have a look at how that would work. In the product backlog, I have tagged a number of features to the feature development pipe, like this. By committing one of these items to the sprint, I can see how all of these steps have been fleshed out. The orange tasks are ready to be started. You can see how the Ready for Code Review task has been assigned automatically to programmer Anna and QA approval has been assigned to QA Karen. I'm now going to assign development to programmer Fred. And live deployment goes to him as well. Now let's say that programmer Fred completes the development tasks. You can now see that the pipeline moved over to Ready for Code Review and QA approval. In programmer Anna's to-do list, you can now see that there is a task ready for code review that can be completed. So if you look here, we can see that she can now do this code review. Let's say that all the issues are fixed and she completes it. Now we go back to the planning view and we can see that it has been completed here as well. If QA Karen would complete it as well, we are now ready to do live deploy. Programmer Fred can do this and the whole feature has been completed. If we look in the backlog, we can see that it has been completed there as well. In reality, we might be able to live deploy the feature without doing the code review. Let's use workflows to model that change in the process. I'm going to open up the feature pipeline again. In Ready for Code Review, I'm going to select to run a workflow instead and I'm going to choose the already prepared code review. Let's have a look at the code review workflow. In this workflow, we are saying that the item will start with in development. It will then go to ready for review and it will be assigned to programmer Anna. Programmer Anna can now choose, as indicated by these arrows, whether to pass or fail it. Failing it would send it back to in development. Lastly, I will also make sure that we are only using these statuses. Otherwise, I will see both the default status 
and the workflow status, which can be a bit confusing. Now let's look at how this would run when I commit a feature from the backlog. Once again, I'm going to assign development and live deploy to programmer Fred. Now you can see that the state is in development as indicated in the status column. Let's say that programmer Fred is done and moves this to the next status. Going back to programmer Anna, you can see that she has a task in her to-do list where she can pass or fail this code. Let's have a look back in the project schedule again. Let's say QA does their testing and approves the feature. Even though the code review hasn't been done, we can still live deploy this feature. But the code review needs to be done in order to not have decaying code. So programmer Anna will go in there and if she fails it, it will be reopened for programmer Fred, hopefully with some comments on why it has failed. Fred can now complete it again and send it back for another review. This time, perhaps programmer Anna passes it. This was just a short introduction on how pipelines and workflows work. Thank you for your time. Please reach out to support at handsoff.com if you have any questions or comments on this video and tell us how you work with pipelines and workflows.